Hello and welcome back. We're going to talk about creating our very own user flow for onboarding. So in our last video, we sped up our workflow a bit and now we have a bunch of different components that we can just plop into our designs really, really easily. And we're going to use those to just kind of signify fields, text, and we can work out those details just a little bit later, but we really want to understand what users need to click, what they need to do, what they see, and what gets them to the next step. I think for the first user flow, we should probably do something like onboarding or those very first screens that a user sees when they first come to our product. We really want to make a great impression and we want to push them into the funnel of registering and telling us about their interests. So let's actually do that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to press F and we're going to create a frame. It doesn't matter which size. I like to have a big canvas to work with. Because, you know, we did actually show a couple of flows that went beyond three steps, but I think we're going to probably go to four or five steps, and that's totally fine. We're going to keep it simple. So we'll call this uh, onboarding flow. What we're going to do here, if you notice that we have our assets and layers tabs. So if I go into assets, I can go into our local components, and I'm going to go into user flow demo. And into there, I have my components screen or my components section which is actually this frame over here. And I can start pulling components from there into my user flows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab that screen background. I'm gonna grab this as well. I'm not sure what else I'm gonna grab right now. So let's think about this flow. So step one of creating a user flow is to have a title. So let's think about our title. Our title should be what do we want the user to actually accomplish during the onboarding? I want the user to register with our product. Okay. I like to keep things really neat. I like using this font. Uh, Gilroy, it's really nice font. Let's just set that. Okay, that's gonna work for now. So we want a, our user to register with our product. Step one, uh, when they come to our welcome screen, they should probably see something like, I don't know, like a welcome banner, maybe a button, probably see some text too. Some welcome text. That's just saying, hey, welcome to Habitual. We are an awesome product and you should totally register with us. If we think about this a little differently, we'll notice that there's probably a decision moment here. We shouldn't force a user to register. We could probably give them the option to skip and you know go right into our product and we can handle that later, but we should probably just have a screen down here as well. And maybe we'll have like a, this can signify some sort of like skip text. Oops, I didn't actually make a smaller one. So what we could do, we can duplicate this Go into our stroke. We're going to say none. And we're going to say round on our cap ends. That way we have a nice kind of hill looking cap. And there we go. Let's actually open this up just a bit. So that way we have a little bit more breathing room because we're going to have to write underneath these. So let's open up our frame. Like I said, like. The size of the frame doesn't really matter right now. We can clean that up just later. Right now, I am focused on creating a good flow. Okay, so what we'll group these. Actually, let's go to our layers panel. So let's do Command Z just to show you what just happened there. We'll select both of these since they are instances of our initial arrow. So we want to actually disconnect that. So what you can do is you can right click and you can detach that instance, or you can select them and click option, command and B. And you'll notice that they're both frames again. And if we do option command K, now we can name them 
second arrow. And we can copy that and paste it and take this and put it into our components file up here. So now we have another component to use. Okay, so now I know that step one, let's write step one. And let's make that smaller. And let's start writing a little bit of a description for it. Okay, now we have our text. Perfect. So what we can do is our description should be something like, what does the user see and what do they do to get to the next screen? So user arrives at our welcome screen and notices a button to proceed forward for registration. This text is a little too big. We can bump that down just a bit. The user is also able, let's break this out into a second paragraph. The user is also able to skip this step and go straight to our home page. So now we know what the user can do on step one and what they can do here. So I know that in step one, I'm going to be able to click this big primary um, call to action and go straight to the registration, or I can avoid that and skip it. And I'll eventually have to register once I check out, but I can go right into the home screen and we can give them a little bit of a teaser on why our app is so great. So step two, what happens on step two? So step two, we're not gonna really focus on the actual home screen right now, but we're gonna focus on step two. And step two should be something like the user starts the kind of the registration process. So maybe it's like the user is prompted to add their email and password. They can confirm those details and proceed. Okay, so let's just build that out really quickly. I'm gonna use the assets tab right here. There's probably, this should be, let's go back to our components page so we can just fix that really quickly. So another interesting thing you can do here is you can right click and go to master component. And over here, all we need to do is select top, bring that right in and now, we can select top and bottom. So perfect. Let's go back to our flow. So we have an input, we have a couple of inputs and we have a primary button. Great. Okay, that's step two. Now step three. What should the user see? The user should probably see uh, a step to add their photo, possibly. So we can, the user can add a photo or skip that step. So we do wanna make this registration fairly easy. So the ability to actually skip the step is kind of key, especially here where a photo isn't necessarily needed. So we'll just write that in. And you'll notice the way I'm actually writing, it's not really friendly. It's kind of extremely logical. And uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because I really want people to understand and be able to kind of read this once. And it's, it's kind of like a manual or a blueprint in a way. I really want them to understand it at first glance. So that is step three. Step four, now we probably get into some more interesting things like actually adding their interests. So step four, the user can now, the user can now pick interests and hobbies to personalize 
their shopping experience. So this is probably like a headline. There's probably some text here. There's probably a bunch of little buttons, like little pills or check boxes that they can tick off. So let's put a headline up here. Let's give it some text. Maybe there's a series of check boxes. We can actually just modify these if we want, just to speed things along. Okay, so now they are prompted to actually pick their interests and hobbies to personalize their experience. And the next step is, what should the next step be here? So they've picked their interest, um, they've possibly uploaded a profile. You know, maybe we're missing a step here and that's totally fine, we can review these. I often just go back to my team to just get some insight on what they think uh, of our current flow. So you should definitely do this, um, not necessarily in a silo, get some feedback really quickly. We're gonna end our flow right here. So step five, success. The user has registered for the habitual product and can now access all of our features. So essentially, the user will see a success screen. Maybe it is this uh, little ball, maybe it's some like welcome screen text that we've used there. That is perfect. And that's it. That's essentially our user flow for onboarding. Um, it's really detailed. We understand the actual purpose of the flow. We understand that, you know, there's a possible break here and we need to think about what that looks like uh, for the user. We started building out these steps a little bit more and thinking about them, that this is a pretty linear uh, a flow right now. There are some moments where the user can make a decision like over here. They can actually just, um, you know, they can skip a step. Well, now we're starting to think about all the elements that are gonna be here as well. Um, if you have more refined sketches, you can actually start wireframing at this point. There really is no right or wrong way to do this. Uh, I like to think about this very conceptually, so I'm not really worried about like the visual design or anything like that just at the moment, but I do know that I'm starting to think about this from a user's perspective and what um, they should be seeing and what they should be doing at each step. So. This is our flow for registering with our product.